Okay, page 208. Today we are covering equations that include algebraic fractions. So we're going to talk about um, solving some equations and we'll use all the techniques that we've developed over the last few days on algebraic fractions. And today is the last day of a new material for the entire semester. Coming up on Friday is our fifth and final quest. Remember that's a group quest, so you'll work with your uh, classmates for that class. If you guys finish the quest early, which you might, then you'll begin reviewing for the final exam with the time that you have left over in Friday's class. Coming up on Monday is our review day. Uh, I have no agenda for the review day. It's going to look just like the other review days where I say do whatever you think you need to do to best prepare for the final exam. I'll just give you a, a brief overview of some of the stuff you can look forward to on the final exam, but you'll have almost all of that period to just study however you think you can study best. And then our final exam is one week from today. Notice the earlier start, it's not an 8.40 start, it is an 8 a.m. start right here in this classroom on the 20th. Questions on the calendar? All right, so page 208, we'll start at the top. Jeremy? Thank you. Uh, let's go to Marcy for number one. Denominators. When solving the equation with algebraic fractions, it's best to use the equation. Okay, so we're going to solve a few equations here, but actually we're, we're really not going to write anything down. I'm just going to point and, and we'll read along, and then you guys will have lots of time to practice this new idea. So here's the equation 1 over x equals 8 over 6x plus 3. This is fundamentally different from anything we've done in the last three days. What's the difference? What kinds of things have we been doing with these fractions over the last three days? We've been adding them, we've been subtracting them, we multiplied them, we divided them. What have we not done? We did multiplication. What is this problem? It's an equation, which we have not done. So fundamentally different from the stuff we've been doing. Yes, we are solving an equation. So the outcome of this problem is going to be something like x equals 17, right? We are solving, which is different from the outcome in the last three days where the answers were typically fractions, right? Something with x's still in them. So uh, the first step is exactly the same as it has been over the last two classes, and that's to factor the denominators. This first denominator is plain old x, nothing to do there. What can we factor out of the second denominator? 3. And we pull out a 3 and we get 2x plus 1. So right now I'm looking at this guy right here. Everybody buy its equivalent to the original problem. Okay. And now we're going to complete the denominators. We're going to fill in what's missing. We want to make the denominators the same. So what is this first denominator missing that the second denominator has? only five of you, so you need to pitch in more than you might normally when there are more people here. This guy's missing everything. It's missing three, and it's missing a 2x plus one, right? And so we're going to take that fraction. We're going to multiply top and bottom by a three and a 2x plus one, and that's what's written out there. Everybody see it? You can see the one over x is still there, but we filled in what was missing. What is the second fraction missing that the first fraction has? Is an x. And so we're going to copy the fraction, so I'll highlight um, that's the 8, there's the 3 and the 2x plus 1, and then we give it an x on the bottom, and then we have to give it an x on top as well. What can we say about the denominators right now? They're equal. That was the whole idea. We have built the lowest common denominator, and they have the same denominator. Really quick detour. Suppose I gave you this question. Uh, 5 over 14 is equal to x over 14. How much is x? 5. Right? Easy. 
x has to be 5. So are you guys willing to buy that if two fractions are equal and their denominators are equal, then therefore their numerators are also equal? We buy it. x has to be 5. Okay, so there is a mathematical thing that we are doing, like that's kind of a, like a wishy-washy statement that I just made, but really what's going on here is we're going to multiply both sides by 14, the denominator, and then the 14s cancel there, and the 14s cancel there, and x equals 5 is the conclusion that we all bought into. That's really what's going on. I don't need us to multiply both sides by that denominator, but I just wanted to firm it up with something that we know is legitimate, that's to multiply both sides by the same thing. So in this part right here, I have two fractions that are equal. What did we just say about those denominators? They are equal, and therefore they cancel, so the numerators have to be equal as well. So this entire thing here has to equal that thing, and we get to just plain ignore the denominators, only because we did all the work to make them equal. That's what makes it so we can ignore them. We buy this? If you multiply both sides of that equation by those denominators, the denominators just both cancel completely. So we get the much simpler equation that's highlighted in blue. And it's written, I'll write it, I'll highlight it in blue there too. And then you solve the equation, but the benefit here is that there are no fractions. So we do all the work to get the same denominator, and then we get to ignore the denominators, and it becomes simpler. That's the technique for solving equations with fractions. Questions on that? Okay, so we won't go through the details. It turns out when you solve this much simpler equation here, you get x equals 3 halves. One thing that Marcy read for us is that for um, solving equations with fractions in them, it's mandatory to check your answers. I have not insisted that we check our answers on every problem so far this semester, but with these kinds of equations, it turns out you can do everything right and get an answer that doesn't work. And it's just kind of a fluke of, of these kinds of equations. So we have to check. So what does it mean to check? It means take your x equals 3 halves and substitute all the way back in for all the x's in the original equation, not any of the equations that we created. And so I'm going to highlight down here in green. Do you guys buy that the original equation, if we just change x to 3 halves, which is what we think the answer is, that's what we get in green. You see it? 1 over x, that becomes 1 over 3 halves. 8 over 6x plus 3 becomes 8 over 6, 3 halves plus 3. See it? We're just substituting 3 halves. Then we go through a little bit of fraction arithmetic and eventually end up with a statement like this. Does 2 thirds equal 8 twelfths? Yes, it does. And so in this case, x equals 3 halves works, and we move on. We've got our answer. In the second demo problem that we're about to do, the number isn't going to work. But in this case, it works. OK, so let's quickly take a look at part B, more complicated equation. It's got three fractions in it, three terms, I should say. Um, so uh, the first thing, again, is to factor all those denominators. So this first guy is really just a 2 over 1. There's nothing to do there. We're on page 208. The second fraction has an x minus 2 downstairs. Can we factor anything there? Nope, x minus 2 is not factorable. How about the x squared minus 2x? What can we factor out? x. So we factor out the x. And do we buy that uh, that guy is really x, x minus 2? But all right. OK, so the denominators are factored. And now we're just going to complete what uh, with what's missing. So this first guy, 2 over 1, what is it missing? Everything, x and x minus 2, right? So there's my 2 over 1, and then I filled in an x times x minus 2 downstairs, and therefore upstairs as well. Looking at the second fraction, I see a 4 over x minus 2. What is that denominator missing? What is it missing? I'm missing an x plus 2. There's no x plus 2 down here. What is, what is it missing? Currently, it has an x minus 2. It's missing just the x in the front. So there's the 4 over x minus 2 circled. And then we complete the denominator with an x downstairs and therefore an x upstairs. We see what we're doing? 
So we're complete, so all the denominators are the same. Nothing new there. We did that the last two classes. But the new thing for today, given that it's an equation, is that we can just ignore those denominators. We can get rid of them because they're all the same. Couldn't get rid of them before, but we can get rid of them now because they're all the same. Again, if you walked in late, the reason that we can get rid of them is that you can multiply both sides by that denominator. Multiply everything by x times x minus 2. And if you do that, the x times x minus 2 will cancel on every single fraction. And so all that's left is what's written on the top, just the numerators. What's written down here is an equation. 2 times x times x minus 2 plus 4x equals 8, which is a whole lot simpler than the previous equation. So that's the new thing. And then we go through the process and we solve, and I'm just going to jump to the answer so that we can check. Turns out we get x equals plus or minus 2. Two answers to this one. And therefore, two different checks. Again, when you check, you go all the way back to the original. So here's the first check, x equals negative 2. If you plug x equals negative 2 in for all of the x's in this original equation, you, you buy a circle here, that that is the same as that with the x's replaced by negative 2. You agree? Uh, so we have two answers. We're going to check both of them. Yeah, we're just doing one first. Okay, and so then if you follow the calculation, eventually you get something that says 2 minus 1 equals with a question mark 8 over 8, does it? 2 minus 1 is 1, 8 over 8 is 1. Finally, we get to something that we know is true, so it works. x equals negative 2 is correct. And then we do the same thing now, but uh, remember we had x equals plus or minus 2. Something is fishy here. This, can you guys change that to a plus 2? The second one. And so then I'm going to circle this guy in black. So the two circled black equations, they're the same, but we just changed x to positive 2. And what happens, let's take a look at this guy here. No. So the circled fraction here, what is it? It's 4 over 0, which is a real problem. right? 4 over 0 is undefined. And as soon as we get that zero in the denominator, there's no more arithmetic to do. There's no more check to do. It's just the end of the game. X equals two doesn't work. You get something undefined, it doesn't work. And so even though we did nothing wrong in the algebra, the nature of algebraic fraction equations is that you can sometimes get solutions that just don't work. They're called extraneous solutions. It looked like they're going to be solutions, but it turns out they're not. So what's the only answer to this problem? Is negative 2. All right, so another, it's the same typo carried down here. You can change that to a plus as well, the very bottom one. So it says x equals 2 is not a valid solution. OK, so to summarize, these are inherently different creatures than we've been studying the last three days. These are equations not expressions to be manipulated and simplified. The technique is to build the common denominators by filling in what's missing, factor everything first. All of that is old. The new thing, once all those denominators are the same in an equation, you can get rid of those denominators and just solve what's left on top. And then finally, absolutely mandatory to check your answers at the end. OK, activity starts on the next page. <coughs> Let's see if we can get through it. Raise the flag if you get stuck. Oh, uh, one quick announcement before I forget. Um, so I would really like for people to do a lot of homework between now and the end of the semester. Um, and that includes going back and doing old homework that is late. So as of this morning, I think, I don't have a whole lot of experience with the inner workings of my math lab, but I think that I took off any new lateness penalties that might accumulate for doing homework late. So it used to be anything done after the due date was 25% off. I think that you can go back now and do any old problems or get hundreds on things that you haven't finished yet and get that uh, homework grade up to 100 as of this morning. 
Um, I wasn't intending to do this all semester. It's just something I've been thinking about the last couple of weeks because I really want people to go back and do the homework as you prepare for the final exam. So, um, so see how high you can get that homework grade boosted between now and the final exam. Uh, okay, so I have, I don't know. No, I don't, the intention is not for you to go back and redo anything. It's just that if there's stuff you haven't done, then to go back and do that. 